of the 30th PGA Grand Summer Golf, a uh, 66, 67, 133, 9 under total. Um, Potter, it looks like you made the right decision to come to Bermuda. Absolutely. And, all right. <laughs> 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 Uh, yeah, no, it was it was always the right decision, no matter what. You know, if you're you got to come here, you got to give yourself the chance. Uh, you know, it's a fantastic tournament. It's an enjoyable tournament. You know, even if I finish fourth here, I'd, I'd be I'd be quite confident that I made the right decision. Uh, it is a bonus to come and win, no doubt about it. Uh, and it was unfinished business for me, having having lost in two playoffs. It, it was nice to come back and uh, and win it now and. Yeah, it feels good. I haven't won in a while, so uh, you know it's nice. Nice winning is a habit, and it's, it's nice to do it. Very good. If we could just go through your card before we go to Q and A, um, one bogey. But let's go ahead and start with your birdie on uh, number five. And uh, yeah, number five, I hit driver in the middle of the green. I played the first five holes really well. Uh, hit driver in the middle of the green, two putted. Things were very comfortable. Kind of lost my focus. A little bit on, on six and seven, and things were going away for me. I hold a good putt on eight uh, down the green, no doubt a bonus. Uh, I hit a super, I hit a bad tee shot on 11, and I hit a super six iron into the green to four feet. And you know, you know when things are going for you uh, on both uh, 11 and 12, I, I had another like a four footer on 12 as well. And both times the guys in front of me hit putts and missed and essentially read the putt for me so there was no no questioning the line or any doubt in me uh, and then obviously following up with another birdie on, on, on 13 I hit my nicest shot of the day I hit six iron in there to about 10 feet and from there on it was very much trying to batten down the hatches and, and get to the clubhouse uh, you know I, I think I was four shots ahead at that stage I think things might have been different on 16, uh, 15 if uh, if Webb holds his putt. I obviously only had a two-shot lead coming into into uh, 16, which is a treacherous hole. But yeah, I, I was it was a bonus to still have a three-shot lead, and then you know once I hold my putt on, on 17 or on 16, I, I felt it was it was all over at that stage. It was just a question of uh, getting the last two holes played without too much uh, too much harm, too much damage being done and uh, it, it's always nice to have uh, have three putts to win a tournament and if you have three, take them. <laughs> John? Yeah, uh, Padre, uh, I would imagine winning any tournament has got to be good for the confidence. Can you just talk about how good it feels to win again and ending, you know, getting close to ending the year on, on a good note like it, this? It, it, it's very important to win. There's no doubt about it, and and the feelings I would have out there, you know, in the last in today in the 18 holes, it's the exact same feelings as you would have on a Sunday because I've got a two shot lead. I'm trying to I'm trying to protect the lead somewhat. I know I need to make some birdies to, to, to move forward. And it's exactly like any Sunday, you know, you know you don't, you don't want to mess up, uh, and yet you still have to play some good golf. And and definitely out there, you know, at times I had to remind myself not to be too cautious. At times I had to. You know, try and be aggressive and try and make the birdies. And, and you know, you can't wait for other guys to, to make mistakes. You've got to you've got to go forward. And I got a nice run, as I said, in the middle of the round, the three birdies, and, and for me that closed it out. Uh, that was very important, and it was a question. I suppose tee shot in 15 and the tee shot in 16 are difficult after that, but uh, at least with a tree shot lead, I I, I knew I, I didn't have to chase anything and. Uh, you know, it was it was nice to hit two good tee shots in those holes, I suppose, and on 17 as well. Uh, so, really, uh, it was a question of getting to the clubhouse at that stage. Follow up. Yeah, could you talk about the putt on number eight? And it, uh, we heard there was a little chuckle in there. It looked like the guys were looking off the ocean. And, yeah, uh, when I and was. Uh, and how far was it? I, I'd say it was 35 feet. I hit a lovely tee shot, and I I was a little bit unlucky. It just pitched at the top of the slope and came back rather than getting over the the slope, but. You know, as I'm doing my work and reading the put, uh, the three, three, three boys and their caddies are all discussing the water and looking out there, and I, I felt very lonely. And <laughs> uh, I kept telling myself, right, come on, do your job, focus here, and like anything else, you, you try and do it and put the thoughts out of your mind. So when I hold the put, I says, well, now I can go and enjoy the ocean. 
and uh, I walked right up there and stood and had a look and took it all in because you do want to take things like that in on the golf course but obviously at times you, you have to be focused and, and, and not getting distracted so uh, like a good example for me at 18 you know once once I was on the green I could well, certainly when, when Webb didn't chip in I could certainly enjoy the end of the round and, 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 and take it in whereas if if I had to two put the last you know you really would have to keep your head down and not not be you know smelling the roses let's say and, and uh, that was a perfect case on that eight hole because it is as beautiful a scenic a spot you can find anywhere in the world uh, and when you've made a birdie and hold it on foot it's even nicer it's hard to believe Jim how, how big was he up and down out of the bunker at six you know yeah I felt comfortable enough that I would get up and down there. Even though, but when I went up, I had a bad stance, so it was it was it was a bit awkward. I, you know, my bunker play has been good this year, so I, I didn't feel too bad about that. Uh, in terms of momentum for me during the day, like I didn't make a bogey until the last, uh, and as I said, I'd I had three four at the last, so I didn't even realise I hadn't made a bogey until that stage. But I think uh, the button age was very big. No doubt about it, and this and this second shot into into eleven were the were the two biggest moments out there for me, and, and maybe the putt in sixteen because it really did close it out in sixteen. I, I was really happy to hold that putt in sixteen because that's the sort of thing I haven't been doing. So it was nice to hold a putt uh, under pressure. You know, three shot lead is very comfortable with those two holes to play. Maybe two shots wouldn't have been so good, and as it turned out, well. It mightn't have been enough two shots, but three was plenty. <laughs> right. uh, Padre, what did you hit for your tee shot at eight? I hit seven iron. Okay. Little seven iron. Uh, Padre, uh, at two and 14, it looks like your approach on both of those are going to be very close. And they both spun back um, probably much further than you thought they were going to. Yeah, you know. I struck it, particularly in two, I struck it, it was more like a long chip shot particularly well. Uh, I was surprised to see it come back as much as that on, on a chip shot, normally it'd be one bounce stop. On um, 14, I kind of got drawn into that, I think. I, I really liked the yardage for the club I had, but, you know, in hindsight, I should have hit, instead of hitting a full uh, 50 degree wedge, I should have hit a half 40, 60 degree wedge, and that would have they would have landed in the same place without the speed. So maybe it was a, I just liked the shot so much on, on 14, I maybe got drawn into it a little bit too much. And uh, it was a good number for the yardage, but I should have realized I was going to get a bit of backspin by hitting it hard there. So that was a mistake. The, the, one, and the one and two was a surprise. The one on, on, on 14, I would categorize as a bit of a mistake, but I've, I've been very comfortable with my chipping. So that was, it was no problem where I left myself. Padre, I was just wondering if you were aware that you're only the second European to have ever won this tournament. Well, that came up last night. I was, I was very surprised that Wuzzy was the only guy who's ever won it uh, before me. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm surprised. I'm very happy about that. I like, uh, I've set a few European records. I don't, it's not quite a record being the second guy. But, <laughs> uh, you know, I, I'm, by Christmas I'll probably make it into some sort of record. So. Uh, it's, uh, you know what, yeah. I. I I'm surprised that that's the case, considering there's been some great Europeans, and I'm, I'm sure they've played many times. And of course, I'm just happy to be the winner this time. Potter, last night at the, the champion celebration, you talked about your career, and not unlike many careers, having ups and downs and peaks and valleys, and uh, obviously Augusta's six months away, but do you feel yourself now on an upswing, and are you expecting to, to win a major next year? Expecting to win a major, that would be, uh, well, you'd love to be able to expect to win a major, just, just like that. It sounds easy saying it. I believe I'm playing really good golf. I, I believe that there's good stuff in my game already. I believe there's other stuff that I need to tidy up. Uh, I see a lot of good things happening, and I do believe that I'm turning the corner into a peak. Uh, what those peaks are, we we'll wait and see. You know, you could have a beautiful, you could have a beautiful 18 months, and, and 
and win half a dozen tournaments but no major. Maybe I could win one major and no other tournaments and that would still be particularly nice eight, probably be a better 18 months to be honest. So you don't know what, what's going to happen in terms of winning and winning majors. They're not that easy to come by. Uh, it was pretty tough for me up to 2007 and then by the end of 2008 it seemed quite easy. But <laughs> uh, I, I, I do realise with, with experience that uh, you know, the wins don't, they don't come around as often as you think. Uh, I do believe I'm going into a nice period in my career now. Uh, I'm looking forward to some good successes. Uh, but we, we can wait and see. You can't, you can't force it. I'm certainly not, uh, you know, I don't think anybody in the game really has the ability to, to say, I'm going to win any particular tournament and that's it. It's, there's, there's more to it than that. You, you do need your breaks. Just like I said today, I got some nice breaks on uh, on eleven and twelve, where the guys had put some similar lines, and I, you know, they were only four footers, but the fact is, they may were made a lot easier by the fact that the two guys, that Web, it was actually Webb and both of them, gave me the line, and, and you know, it's easy to hold a four footer when you don't have any doubt. Question. What's the last say? One block. Um, Patrick, what was uh, going on at the sixteenth there? Uh, I know. You there's a lot of confusion going there between Bubba and uh, um, Bradley, and you were trying to sort things out yourself as well. No, it was it's very awkward in, on on the tour when you cross a uh, you know when a ball crosses a, a red hazard uh, or, or or the yellow hazard. Uh, it, it's always difficult to establish the exact point. Uh, as it turned out. I, I probably had the best view. Keegan had turned away. Uh, his caddy was was pretty confident, and I was confident once the ball had carried up a good distance. You know, and, and I I felt when I got up there, the line was even left of the red stake. And Keegan Keegan is is is, is was definitely being harsh on himself. You know, it's it, it's nice to see that, and and you know. Uh, you know, maybe if he'd gone up there all guns blazing and saying, oh, it's definitely cross. But I, I felt it, 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 I, no, you couldn't be absolutely positive, but I, I was pretty sure it crossed. And the fact that uh, Keegan, was, it wasn't my decision, but he was edging so much away from it because he was afraid to make a decision and he didn't want to be seen to take advantage. But I, I felt he'd be, he'd be going the wrong way if he went back. I thought he'd be, he was being overly harsh on himself, so uh, when nobody could make a decision, I eventually decided, well, I'll make the decision. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, we, we haven't had a win in a long time, and I've got to tell you, they don't come around anywhere near as often as you believe they come around. And when you win, you make sure you enjoy it. Congratulations on your great way of proving yourself to be the champion of champions for what many believe. It's the most difficult event to qualify for. So it is my privilege on behalf of the 27,000 men and women of the PGA of America to present you with the PGA Grand Slam of Golf Trophy. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been a great event on Sunday night. As you know, it rained, but that caused us to freshen up the ground and get prepared for the great event for Monday. On Sunday night, it was a great sunset, and here we are on a great day where the sun is shining, where it's only about Bermuda for day. Thank you all for coming. Thank you for all our visitors. Thank you for uh, the Bermudas that showed up. We are appreciative of the PGA Association. We have done a great job over the last uh, six years. Uh, you guys, we, we love you to death. You have been a great uh, ambassador for us to make Bermuda the place where it is. Bermuda is so much more. We want to thank our acting premier for coming out, Dame Jennifer Smith. We want to thank uh, your hand. Thank you, Your Excellency, for coming around on the 16th hole and watching uh, a Harrington shoot that uh, on the par, I think it was, or three. Uh, but here we are. Today to present this particular pink jacket. I have my pink shorts on. <laughs> it's pink sand. It's all about Bermuda. So Harrington, um, on behalf of Bermuda, 
You think I know this is your third conjecture? He lost the other two. Well, he lost his he lost his playoff. But anyway, here's another one. Do not lose this one. So we thank him. He did a great job today, and we thank him. Have a great day. Slam champion, Padre Harrington. PJ officials said, Firstly, I'd like to say, Do you think I'd go okay in the disco tonight? And I have a lot of people to thank. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the Minister of Tourism and, and Bermuda uh, Tourism for supporting this event. Uh, I come from a, a small island, but this is even a smaller one. Uh, but I do understand, I work with the tourism back in Ireland, and I understand the good job that the tourism body does. Uh, without you, your support in an event like this, they wouldn't happen. So we really do, as players, appreciate uh, the work you put in. Uh, 